The tales of Fintan Mac Bakra revisited a time when the Gael celebrated magic and shapeshifting in Ireland's pagan past. Fintan, the seer, was the oldest and wisest fillet in Ireland. He claimed to have lived over 5,000 years in the form of a salmon, eagle, and falcon. His extraordinary life embodied the Celtic beliefs about the immortality of the soul and the mysticism of nature. The medieval text, The Settling of the Manor of Terra, told of a meeting between Diarmate Mac Serbale, the High King of Ireland, and Fintan Mac Bacra. Diarmate Mac Serbale was the last king of Terra to observe the pagan traditions of the Gaels in the 6th century. He summoned Fintan Mac Bacra to his royal residence during the feast at Terra. Fintan Mac Bacra, meaning ancient white, was asked to judge the amount of land owned by the high kings at Terra. The elderly Philid was an authority on the history and geography of Ireland. He declared the estate of Terra encompassed all the land in Erin. The Liebhar Gapala Erin, meaning the Book of the Taking of Ireland, chronicled the life of Fintan Mac Bacra over the millennia. Fintan Mac Bacra arrived in Ireland during the Antediluvian Age. He accompanied the goddess, Cesare, and her followers to Era in order to escape the biblical flood. Their colony marked the first of six mythical invasions of Ireland. Cesare led the expedition to Ireland after her grandfather, Noah, refused to allow her father, Bith, and her family a place on the ark. Noah told Cesare the only way to survive the Great Flood was to travel to the west and seek refuge in Ireland. Another version of the story claimed Cesare built an idol. The effigy told her to sail to Ireland to avoid the deluge. Cesare and her followers made the perilous journey across the ocean on three ships. Two of the vessels were lost during a storm at sea. The boat carrying Cesare moored safely at Bantry Bay on the south coast of Ireland. Another possible landing place was Kenmare Bay in County Kerry. Fintan Mac Bacra was the first man to set foot on Irish soil. Cesare, her father, Bith, her brother, Ladra and fifty women joined him on dry land. The annals of the four masters stated that Cesare and her followers settled in Era during the 3rd century BC. Cesare divided the women equally between the three men. She believed her people would found new kingdoms in Innisfail, meaning the land of destiny. Fintan Mac Bacra became the husband of Cesare and sixteen of her female companions. Bith was the patriarch of seventeen women and Ladra took the remaining sixteen as his wives. Ladra was the first man to be buried under the soil of Ireland. He succumbed to an injury received while steering the ship into Irish waters. Some accounts said he died from an excess of women. His final resting place was at Ard Ladron, meaning the tomb of Ladra, near Gorey in County Wexford. Fintan Mac Bacra fled to a cave on Tauntina, meaning Hill of Waves, rather than perform his marital duties. The mythical cave known as Fintan's Grave lies on Tauntina, the highest point of the Ara Mountains in County Tipperary. Sadly, Cesare and her followers perished beneath the raging waters of the Great Flood forty days after arriving in Ireland. Fintan Mac Bacra was the only survivor. Cesare and her female companions died at their settlement on Nakma Hill in County Galway. Her grave lies near the tomb of Maeve, the legendary warrior queen of Connaught. Bith drowned as he climbed the rocky cliffs of Sleeve Beag in County Fermanagh. His tumulus is on the summit of the mountain which now bears his name. The medieval poem, The Colloquy Between Fintan and the Hawk of Ackle, recounted how Fintan Mac Bacra survived the flood by shapeshifting into a salmon, hawk, and falcon. The passages of the manuscript echoed the deep respect of the Gaels for the Philid, or poets in Ireland. Irish poets mastered the skill of speaking or chanting words in a Roscana. A Rosk, meaning poetry of vision, was a single, unrhymed verse that served as a potent incantation. Their poems contained powerful magic that could heal the sick, protect warriors in battle or curse evildoers. Bards were considered worthy of their high status in the Celtic territories. They often followed the Druidic tradition of passing down ancient wisdom and knowledge by speaking in riddles. Fintan Mac Bacra was among the few mortals who possessed such ancient knowledge. His supernatural talents resembled those of the gods and goddesses in the other world. The hawk listened to the old seer recount his past lives on Ackle Island near the coast of County Mayo. 
The gods put me into the shape of a salmon after the flood, he exclaimed. Fintan the salmon spent the next five hundred years navigating the rivers and waterways of Ireland. He spent much of his time swimming beneath the Acero Falls on the River Urn in County Donegal. Fintan Mac Bacra became known as the Gaul Essa Ruid, meaning the one-eyed salmon of Acero. The hawk of Ackle plucked out one of his eyes while leaping over the waterfall. The Gaul Essa Ruid, was also known as the Inbraden Fiza, or Salmon of Wisdom, in Irish mythology. According to the Fenian cycle, the supernatural salmon acquired wisdom by consuming the fruit of nine hazel trees. The hazelnuts dropped into the sacred waters of the Tobarsagais, or Well of Wisdom, near the source of the River Boyne. Fintan Mac Bacra became fluent in bird language after transforming into an eagle and a blue-eyed falcon. The Celtic god Luff intervened in the fate of Fintan Mac Bacra and returned him to human form. Fintan Mac Bacra witnessed five more invasions of Ireland by Partholan, the leader of the Greeks, the Nemd, the Fir Balg, the Tuatha de Danann and the Milesians. Diarmate Mac Serbale and his nobles listened to Fintan Mac Bacra as he recounted his meeting with the giant, Trefuiljid Treyichair, centuries before. Trefuiljid Treyichair imparted all the history of Ireland to Fintan Mac Bacra as the wisest man in the land. He instructed the Philid on the division of Erin into five provinces. Knowledge in the west, battle in the north, prosperity in the east, music in the south, and kingship in the center. Trefuiljid Treyichair also entrusted Fintan Mac Bacra with the fruit of the magical branch. The seeds planted by the old seer burgeoned into the five sacred trees of Ireland. The Gaels paid homage to the sacred trees as the supernatural guardians of the provinces in Ireland. The Eo Mugna, meaning the Tree of Mugna, was a mighty oak tree that flourished at Balamun near the mouth of the River Shannon in County Kildare. The people of Munster performed rituals around a magnificent yew tree called the Eo Rosa, or the Tree of Ross. Their kings were enthroned beneath its sacred boughs at Lochlanbridge in County Carlow. The tree of Tortu, or Bile Tortan, was an enormous ash tree associated with fertility and healing. It thrived in the territory of the Ui Tordine at Ardbrecon near Navan in County Meath. The Kreb Usnig was an ancient ash tree that stood on the sacred hill of Usneach near Mullingar in County Westmeath. The Gaels regarded the hill of Usneach as the physical and spiritual center of Ireland from the earliest of times. Mid was the first druid to light a fire on the summit of the hill during Beltane. The hill of Usneach was also the final resting place of the Celtic deities, Ariu and Luff. The high kings affirmed their royal status by entering into a supernatural marriage with the goddess Ariu every Beltane. All the nobles of Ireland journeyed with Fintan Mac Bacra to the hill of Usneach. The elderly Philid raised a pillar stone of five ridges on the summit. He assigned a ridge to every province in Ireland. The Ail Na Marian, or the Stone of Divisions, on the western slope of the hill of Usneach marked the meeting place of the five great provinces in Ireland. Fintan Mac Bacra left Terra and died shortly after returning to his home in County Kerry. He converted to Christianity on his deathbed. The spirits of St. Patrick and St. Bridget witnessed the final transformation of the very old Philid, Effinton Mac Bacra. Legends of Love in Celtic Mythology on WordPress discusses the Celtic gods and goddesses of Britain, Ireland, and Europe. Green Man, the gods of sacred trees and forests on Amazon narrates the significance of the woodland deities revered in the Celtic territories.